Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Holy Apostles in Virginia Beach. I'm Tom Fry. Today is Sunday, December 11th, the third Sunday of Advent. We were established 45 years ago to be a symbol of ecumenism honoring both the Roman Catholic and Episcopalian traditions. We have one worship service with two liturgies. Our worship is designed for you to experience both traditions. As a sign of our commitment to Christian unity, we ask you to remain for both liturgies. Today, Monsignor Raphael Pepro will celebrate Mass, assisted by Deacon Gary Hermeyer. Father Mario Melendez will celebrate Episcopal Holy Eucharist. The service is being live streamed. We welcome everyone here and those watching at home. At communion time, if not receiving communion, please come forward for a blessing. For those here, we ask you to silence your cell phones. We will now have the Kim Pan family light the third Advent candle. <laughs> Together we say a very good morning to our brothers and sisters. Join us from your homes. Good morning to you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us now prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Eucharist as we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the lost nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and I would like to invite the children and their adult leaders to the front for the liturgy of the word.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen hands that are feeble, make firm knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared, and the lame will leap like a stag, and the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing. Crowned with everlasting joy, they will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense to me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending a messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
So this week, I was reflecting upon Gaudete Sunday and also uh, John the Baptist. And uh, Gaudete is Latin for rejoice, to bring joy. And so I was thinking, you know, if I asked you, what do you know about John the Baptist? And I suppose some of you could say a couple little things here and there, maybe about him uh, baptizing at the Jordan and everything else. But in reality, for everything that's written in the scriptures, we can tell a lot about John the Baptist. First of all, in Luke's gospel, then it talks about how Elizabeth is Mary's cousin, that she's older, she's considered barren, so it's considered that uh, she probably was past menopause, whatever menopause was at that particular time, we don't know. And then um, also we know that Zechariah was uh, Elizabeth's husband, he was a priest, uh, in the line of uh, Levi's, Levite. And, um, and so, you know, if they all of a sudden had this child who was announced by an angel, Gabriel, to Zechariah while he was lighting incense in the holy place uh, of the temple, which was a high honor to do, that, you know, uh, here's a child that's coming out that's a male, and so he would have been consecrated uh, as a priest from the very beginning, as we've seen in a number of other Old Testament uh, people, when, um, when mothers had just prayed and prayed and prayed to have a child, and w if they had a male child, then oftentimes they consecrated uh, them to the God of Israel. So that would have been something that would have happened with John the Baptist too. And so John would have been uh, trained with other uh, priestly class, would have uh, heard about the scriptures, would have heard about the Torah and everything else. And so what, for whatever reason, we know that John decided to take the ascetic life, and meaning that he was not going to be among the uh, people like his father was with the temple service and everything else. He was going to live a life of strict self-discipline and also something where he gave up many things that the rest of the people at that particular time would have said they were necessities. Because we hear that he's out in the desert, he's kind of foraging for food, he's living on locusts as well as wild honey, and also, you know, he's dressed in this camel's hair and this leather belt. Can you imagine how hot and itchy that is, especially during the summertime, and still smelly during the wintertime? And so, you know, we, we know that that's the kind of person he was. And so he had this idea that Jesus, that the Messiah was coming, and that, you know, he probably went back to the idea of King David, and King David had reunited the kingdom of Israel, and that was the type of king. And so in John's mind, that probably was the type of person he was expecting the Messiah would be as well. And so as we have talked about in the past, there was this high level of Masonic expectation. They figured that the Messiah was coming soon. And so we know that John actually believed that Jesus was the Messiah. You know, he tells people, um, you know, he's a holy man. He's doing this baptism of water for repentance. And when people see holy people, what do many of them do that are able to? They follow them because m most people want to be holy. I, I mean, they, they just get that sense of fulfillment by doing that. So if you have somebody who you consider as holy, then you want to follow them. You want to imitate them. And John the Baptist had a lot of disciples that were following him because they felt so highly of him and his holiness. But John tells them, I'm not the Messiah. That person is the Messiah. And he actually, in John's gospel, points Jesus out. He is the Messiah. There's no question in his mind. In fact, it even says that he saw the skies open and that the, uh, that the uh, dove appears and everything else. In Matthew's gospel, what it says is he knew who Jesus was. And when Jesus says, I want you to baptize me, then John, then, uh, John says, I shouldn't be baptizing you, you should be baptizing me. So there was no question in John's mind who Jesus was. He had his disciples going out and follow Jesus, don't follow me. He needs to increase, I need to decrease. And so that was where John was. And John continued this even as Jesus was doing his ministry of proclaiming uh, repentance and baptizing and everything else. And that is why he, he ran afoul of King Herod. 
because King Herod took Herodias, who was his brother's uh, wife, in to be his wife. Well, what John would have told him, because it's in Deuteronomy, that's adultery. Both of you should be stoned. That doesn't go over very well when you say that to the king, right? <laughs> so as a result, we find in this gospel today that John is in prison. Well, while he's in prison, which, you know, he, who knows what the charge was, and it doesn't really make any difference. When you're a king, you can do whatever you want with the prisoners any time you want. So John's position in, in prison was very precarious. But, <clears throat> excuse me, he was getting reports back about Jesus. Well, John has this idea of who Jesus is supposed to be, right? Uh, he's going to be that one who is going to take charge, who's going to uh, dish out justice and everything else. Well, now, why would he think that? Well, one of the reasons is because of King David and how he was and kind of the thought before that. But how is John living his life? John is living a very strict, disciplined life. He's giving up a lot of things that other people normally would do. And so he's thinking, well, the Messiah is going to be a lot like me. And yet, when he starts getting these reports back, what's happening? Well, Jesus is eating with Pharisees and with tax collectors. He, you know, prostitutes come up to him. Uh, in addition to that, he's drinking at wedding festivals and everything else. Of course, alcohol would have never passed John's lips. And so here he is, he's thinking, you know, this is not who I thought he was going to be. And so imagine yourself in prison. You have no idea what fate, wait, what fate beholds you. The person who you were so convinced was the Messiah that you put everything you had into him and in addition to that told your disciples to go follow him, don't follow me. And so was your, was your life a failure? Was it even worth living if Jesus wasn't that Messiah? And so that's in almost desperation. And I was mentioning to Father uh, Mario this morning, you know, St. John the Cross talks about the dark night of the soul. It's when you don't believe that Jesus or God is out there anymore after you have put everything that you knew about him in that particular basket. All your eggs went in that basket. So John sitting in prison, precarious situation, doesn't know what his future is, has released all of his disciples to Jesus, thinking Jesus was the one, proclaiming Jesus was the one, and so he sends his disciples to see Jesus, two of them, and they say, are you the one, or should we look for another? Well, you know, how many of us have been in a similar situation? I mean, perhaps not in prison, not perhaps having death, but have put all of our eggs in one basket. Perhaps in the spouse that we marry to, that doesn't turn out to be the person that we think that they were. Or that business that we just put hours and hours into, and it goes under. And what about when our bodies start to fail us? thinking that we would always be that young person and that we would be able to do everything we could uh, when we were in our 20s and we can't anymore. You know, these are tough times. And so when, G when uh, John's disciples go and see Jesus, Jesus doesn't say yes, that he's the Messiah. But rather what he does is he goes back to Isaiah to let to repeat what Isaiah said and what um, people, what those disciples could witness, where the blind can now see, where the deaf can now hear, where people are raised from the dead, where the poor are given good news. Because when they bring that message back to John the Baptist in prison, then he will understand that connection to Isaiah. And then he can have joy, rejoicing, Gaudate on this particular day because he can understand that regardless of what happens to him, that Jesus is with him as Jesus is with us. Amen. Amen.
we profess the faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With praise to our God who brings sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf, we humbly offer our prayers. Each Advent, we are called to stay awake for the Lord's coming. Help us to be attentive to how God is calling us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of the body of Christ, the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in places of discord and oppression, for those who are heavily burdened and persecuted for their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who minister to the sick, for healing in both body and spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people and for children, for caring adults in whose faces they can see the face of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishops Barry and Susan, Monsignor Raphael, Father Mario, and Deacon Gary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Honoring our Larkham Covenant, we pray this week for Holy Communion Lutheran, St. Christopher Episcopal, St. Benedict Catholic, and St. Mark Methodist Churches. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special needs and concerns of our ecumenical community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness, hear our prayers as we await the coming of your Son. We offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the bread of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you to humble and contract hearts. And Lord, wash away our iniquities, cleanse us from all our sins. Pray now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Lord our God, May the sacrifice of our worship, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished 
for you, for us, your saving work. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them that they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a blessed spouse in Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
You may merit to be co earth with an alive and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My dear friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, it is with faith in your love and mercy that you take your body. We thank you for giving yourself to us this morning. Let this gift not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and body. And now, my dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life. Amen. And after the spiritual communion for those watching from home, my Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord our God, we implore your mercy that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. today. Uh, if you are uh, here for the first time, uh, it's great to have you. Uh, maybe you'll come back. I should, should say maybe. That sounds terrible. Hopefully you'll come back. Uh, if you are uh, online and uh, I want to, uh, if you are in Virginia, good to see you. If, see you. Uh, if you are in another part of the country, another part of the world, thank you for joining us today in this, in this uh, beautiful day here at Holy Apostles. And if you ever are in the area, please come and uh, come and say hi. Okay, and to all of you online, and to all of you here, your presence is a gift, and for that we are very, very thankful and very grateful. Thank you very much. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Dios Todopoderoso, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oremos, let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And, because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom and with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew to Matthew glory to you when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing he sent word by his disciples and said to him are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another Jesus answered them go and tell John 
What you hear and see, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal place, palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, I'm more than a prophet. There is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has a rise in greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. El Evangelio del Señor, the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Buenos dias, good morning. It's good to see you. Yes, as Dick and Gary mentioned during his homily, we were, we were talking uh, about what we we're going to preach on. You see, see, I got to check because, again, I was choosing between, do I say something about John the Baptist? Remember, Dick and Gary, we were talking about this. Do I, I, I thought to myself, do I say something about John the Baptist or do I go with, 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 the, uh, with the theme of Carreta Sunday? And, and I'm glad that he told me that because otherwise I would have spent... The entire church is going, okay, you need to change that, you need to change that, you need to change that, <laughs> right? So thank you, Deacon Gary, for making this easy. <laughs> I, the, the one thing that I would have said about John the Baptist uh, is that, again, we don't know this for, for sure, but it is possible that part of the reason why he was such a, a hard guy and the clothes that he wore, such an ascetic, maybe, just maybe, he belonged to a group that is called the Essenes, just like we had, uh, you had the Pharisees, you have the, uh, uh, and you had the Sadducees, there is another group, and the Zealots, there's another group that's called the Essenes, and if you ever want to, uh, you ever want to uh, know more about that, come to us, we'll, we, we can talk about that, it will be a great, it will be a great uh, Christian formation moment. In the nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amen. So when I was a seminarian in Boston, sometimes I would wear a black cassock on my way to a worship service or doing something special like the imposition of ashes at the student union on Ash Wednesday. See, I was a seminarian, so of course you would not, I was not going to wear a collar. Uh, since I didn't have a car, and let me tell you, if you can, even if you can afford it, you don't want to own a car in Boston, I would take, I would take the T or the train, the train, while wearing my cassock. So just like wearing my priest collar today, wearing that black cassock on the train could lead to interesting and sometimes funny conversations. And some of the best were with children. And one time this little girl just kept staring at me. And finally she asked me, why are you wearing a black dress? <laughs> and her mother kept saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I laugh and I said, well, it is called a cassock. Yeah, I'm on my way to Mark Chapel at BU, Boston University, for a Sunday service. At that particular time, on my first year of seminary, I was part of the chaplaincy at, at Mark Chapel, and so I was getting ready for that. Then the girl said, you need different shoes. <laughs> I never knew what she meant about that. I don't know if she meant that I should be wearing my best pumps. I don't know. I was thinking about this when I made the arrangements to Borrow this chasuble. I want to I uh, thank the great people at uh, St. Bryce Episcopal Church for letting me, letting me borrow this chasuble. Uh, I thought that if that, that little girl back then saw me now, there is a strong possibility that she would ask me, why are you wearing a pink dress? <laughs> now you see, on a Sunday each, the Advent and Lent, uh, Catholic priests and some Anglican, Anglican priests like yours truly have the option of wearing a rose. Rose chasuble. And odds are likely if the priest chooses that color, he will come out or she will come out in the sacristy and offer some, some sort of comment about, you know, why the color and, or about why, why am I wearing this color that is rose and not pink. And then some priests may be embarrassed, and others may laugh, especially I will laugh, especially if his parishioner will give him a hard time. Because let's be honest, most rose vestments look pink. 
to those who don't spend a lot of time studying paint chips or something. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank, thank you for wearing the pink shirt. Thank you very much, David. It's very liturgically appropriate, which of course brings me to the rest of you men. Why aren't you wearing one? What's wrong with you? The next, the next, uh, next time you need, you need to wear your pink. So again, how many times have I been corrected about a particular color? Sometimes by adults or kids. No, it is not pink. It is Spanish pink or uh, cameo, cameo pink or orchid pink. And I say, sure. <laughs> now, while the choice of color, and the priest comments might uh, elicit a number of comments or chuckles, uh, rose vestments have been part of the tradition of the church for many, many centuries. It is, in fact, a, a beautiful color that has a, a deep, Symbolic meaning. Again, if we're going to do things in the church, it can't just be, well, that's the way we always did it. No, that's a terrible reason. That should start the conversation, but it should not end it, right? right? So the color, which is only used twice in the uh, liturgical year, is, tradition, is tradition, traditionally associated with a sense of joy amidst a season of penance. On both of these Sundays, Gaudete in Advent and Latere in Lent, Rose is worn to remind us that the season of preparation is coming to a close and the great feast is swiftly approaching, right? Deacon Gary mentioned it, rejoice, right? Rejoice. Uh, even the, uh, the antiphon at the entrance that is traditionally sung at some churches at the beginning of Mass on Latere Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday of Lent, speaks of the joy we should possess. Quote, rejoice, O Jerusalem, right? And come together, all you that love her. Rejoice with joy that you have been in sorrow, that you may exalt and be filled with the breast of your consolation. And some I rejoice when they said to me, we shall go into God's house. We shall go into God's house. So when we see the color rose of mass, we are beckoned to rejoice. The season of penance is coming to a close and the celebration of the resurrection of Christ in Lent draws near. And in our case, what? The birth of the child, right? Delivering a uh, 2011 Easter sermon at Canterbury Cathedral, uh, then Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, affirmed that it was possible to experience joy and happiness in spite of difficult circumstances. He pointed to the examples back then of those Christians who remained faithful despite facing threats. In those days, uh, Christians uh, were being attacked in Pakistan and in northern Nigeria. Quote, authentic happiness doesn't take away the reality of threat or risk or suffering. It's just there. It's just there. This is one of the hardest things to get hold of here. How can I feel happy? How can I feel happy in a world so full of injustice, so full of atrocity? He then says, how can I know joy when I am aware of my own failure? In very British way of saying, my own shabbiness of my own depression. That last one really hit me because of course I have depression and some, I think some of you have it too. There are no answers in theory because this isn't a matter of theory, right? This isn't theory for a lot of us, for many of you, right? Joy, he maintained, was not, quote, was, quote, not feeling cheerful or simply pretending that things are not so bad after all. The Christian, he said, was not someone who had accepted a particular set of theories about the world, about the universe, but someone who, quote, lived by the power of the joy that is laid bare in the event, since it was Easter, in the event of the resurrection of Jesus. For right now, this Sunday, the power of joy is also marked by, by, by what? It's marked by the mystery of the incarnation and, of course, again, the birth of the child Jesus has come. I know that for me, I'm looking forward to the joy of showing Thomas, the little baby Jesus that, that Catherine and yours truly will place on our little nativity uh, scene back home. Right? 
Maybe you have done this with your children or your grandchildren. Do you remember the first time, maybe? Uh, that will be a new joy for us. That will be a new joy for us. Hopefully, the, the baby Jesus will survive. I don't know. We'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. Or the wise men, or, which, of course, in typical custom, of course, my days in Puerto Rico, in which the wise men are no, no, they're not there yet. Right? They're somewhere in around the house. And I don't know if you do this. Where uh, We used to do it in my house in Puerto Rico. We do it here, of course. We kind of move them every so often, so they get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Have you, any, any of you done that? You do, uh, some of you, some of you are familiar with this. as something that, something that we do. Because again, unlike, unlike corporate America and consumer Americans will tell you, no, it's not Christmas yet. <laughs> now that I, now that I uh, I'll try to replace my gratitude with joy again. Uh, uh, William said, William said, Ultimately, joy is about discovering that the world is more than you ever suspected. So that you yourself are more than you suspected. Let me say that again. Joy is about discovering that the world is more than you ever suspected. So that you, us, ourselves, are more than we suspected. Question. How are you bringing joy, not only to you, but to others? I want you to pray and reflect on that this week. Is there something in particular that you could do to bring joy to others? I'm being serious here, okay? Sometimes I say these things, and I really, really hope that at least two of you think about this stuff. I work, Dean and Gary, I work really hard in these homilies, you know? <laughs> you know? So I hopefully, you know? Yes, I have an accent. Yes, I speak fast. Yes, I'm loud, but you know. So again, again, pray and reflect this week. Is there something in particular that you could do to bring joy to others? What would that be? In the end, if you see your priest wearing pink, <laughs> remember the call to what? Remember the call to live joyfully. Be joyful. And may our practice of Christianity as Anglicans and Roman Catholics, as Holy Apostles, and beyond, may that be a beacon of joy in a world so often brought down by the many sufferings of our mortal life. Right? One of you actually suggested a, a theme for the next uh, Theologian Tab in February, which is the, the, the theme of death, right? Theme of death. I tell you that, that I told him that the same thing I'm going to tell you. Death terrifies me. Well, that's a very human thing, right? But, but, but Father Mario, you're a priest. Yeah, I'm a human being, <laughs> right? But again, maybe, maybe we can start to bring a little more joy. Maybe we can start by what? By wearing rose, by wearing pink. Thank you, David. And thank you to all of you. <laughs> Amen. Please rise. I want to apologize to everybody who reads after me. You know, you come here and then you see all this stuff all over the place. I, I, you see, I forget. I forget about these things. Uh, you know, so here. There you go. See? I did it. I did it. You saw me. <laughs> and now with joy, let us say what are the ancient creeds of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers to the faithful, prayers to the people. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for a president, for leaders of nations, states, and cities, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For a good earth which God has given us, and for wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphaned, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the poor and oppressed, for the underemployed and the destitute, for the prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection and all who have departed, let us pray to the Lord. For the deliverance from danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the spirit of ecumenism and the unity of all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Mercy. And thanksgiving for after 11 months of unemployment, I have finally found a job that starts on the 19th. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. Joy, rejoice indeed. Rejoice indeed. For the recovery of the soul of Ephraim, that's by the Mary, who died last week. Lord, Lord. 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Uh, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's start here and then we'll go here. Go ahead. Pressure shine upon him. For a friend of ours uh, who is battling his second job for the first Lord have mercy. I, I pray for a community in Detroit uh, that is in, inspired by the work of Mama Thornton. I don't know if you, if you ever, ever heard about her, a blues, a blues uh, artist. Uh, she was the one that actually wrote the original version of Hound Dog that was later recorded by Elvis Presley. And it's a community in Detroit in which uh, children learn about not only about music and about rock and blues, but also about uh, synthesizers and, and all sorts of things, and which can lead to either being a musician or being an engineer or being something else. So I pray for those children, and I pray, I pray for their teachers. Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray. Not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Dios Todopoderoso, Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive your sins for the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. La paz del Señor, the peace of the Lord, be always with you. Amen. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace if you are online. Type some words of peace. La paz del Señor. La paz de Cristo. La paz del Señor. La paz de Cristo. And once again, if, you're, if you are playing with us online, that was not Latin, that was Spanish. Paz del Señor is peace of the Lord, Paz de Cristo is, is a peace of Christ. Again, not that there's anything wrong with saying Latin, it's just another one somebody calling the bishop is like, hey, it's trying to sound, it's trying to sound cool. No, it's just Spanish. And in English, I say, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Please be seated. El Señor esté con ustedes. The Lord be with you. Also. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him with everlasting life. That when, we, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, your only eternal son, to share human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. Este es mi cuerpo. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. Esta es mi sangre. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts, sanctified them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, says Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, Power and the glory. Before we continue, I want to remind everyone that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive at the altar. If for some reason you feel that you cannot receive, I will ask you to please come forward, cross your arms, and you receive a blessing. Mi Señor, mi Dios, my Lord and my God. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Los dones de Dios, the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. 
Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Oremos, let us pray. Almighty Labor Living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood 
of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us in the holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, faithful witnesses, Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Happy birthday to Catherine Melendez, Maria Mills, Shane McDaniel, and Maggie McDaniel. <laughs> Happy anniversary this week to Harry and Nikki Felton. <laughs> this year, Christmas falls on a Sunday. We will celebrate the Christmas liturgy on Christmas Eve, Saturday, December 24th. Carols will begin at 6 p.m. and liturgy will begin at 6.30. The Bible study Christmas luncheon will be this Tuesday, December 13th at 12 p.m. We will be meeting at Why Not Italian in Landstown Commons Shopping Center. The next Theology on Tap will be this Wednesday, December 14th at 6.30 p.m. hosted by Lee and Bonnie Start. Donation forms are available at the greeters table in the gathering area to purchase poinsettias for the sanctuary at Christmas. We invite you to donate poinsettias in Thanksgiving or as a memorial. Please submit your donations before Wednesday, December 14th. You are invited to attend the second Advent session of Adult Christian Formation on Sunday, December 18th. Tom Fry will speak about the genealogy of Jesus according to the Gospel of Matthew. Please send archive submissions to me, Barbara Kimpan, by Tuesday, December 20th. Our Christmas Eve donations will be split between the Catholic Charities and Episcopal Relief and Development, unless otherwise indicated on the memo line of your check. Thank you for your contributions to these developmental organizations. And the Fair Trade Holiday Choc Chocolate and Coffee Sale, the Children's Apostle, excuse me, the Holy Apostles Children Outreach Ministry will be selling Fair Trade Chocolate and Coffee today after services for the holiday season. The fair trade chocolate is made with family farm cocoa from Ghana and the coffee is from Haiti. Your support for fair trade involves the lives of artisans and farmers worldwide and to help eradicate poverty wherever it resides. So please support the effort. Your purchases will be much appreciated. Anything else? Do we forget any other announcements? Okay. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to apologize. There was a little part on, on the homily that I totally forgot to read. It's basically just what the Episcopal Church says about Rose Sunday, God the Sunday, and it's mostly something that I already covered, but there is a part I wanted to read to you. It says, um, this custom is not required in the Episcopal Church, but it is observed by some priests and parishes with a traditional Anglo-Catholic piety. And I said to myself, hey, they're talking about me, right? <laughs> Uh, this custom is reflected by the practice of including a pink or rose-colored candle among the four candles of Ad, Ad and Reed. And that's why we have a rose-colored candle in, the, in, in there. It's not, but it's, I mean, again, we need to know why we're doing the things we do so that not only, not only so that we, we're doing it for a reason, but also that we get in touch with our faith and... Uh, and it's just a beautiful, it's also a beautiful thing. And this, this is important. And also, uh, before the last thing, while I was thanking uh, David for, for wearing rose or pink today, except for him and Deacon Gary and myself and, and Father and Father uh, Monsignor Rafael, uh, well, what, what about you other rest of men? I see some women wearing, wearing pink or rose. What's wrong with the, the, the rest of you? I already said it, but I'm gonna say it again. There's real men wear pink. All right? Keep this in mind. All right? That's right. That's right. That's right. And, uh, and next time, there is no excuse. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is the feast of Our Lady Guadalupe, the Virgin of Guadalupe, who is considered not only the patroness of, of Mexico, but also the, is, is also called as the patroness of the Americas. Right? Um, and that's why some of you, and, and I'll make more, some of you got this, this Basically, a, a, a big prayer card 
right? It has the image and then it has the prayer on the back. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to be doing a couple of low masses for that. One is going to be at uh, uh, St. Bride's Episcopal Church, which is the one that let me borrow this. So that will be tomorrow at St. Bride's in Chesapeake at uh, 7 p.m. And then if you happen to be in the South Hill area on Thursday at 7 p.m. at All Saints, I'll be there celebrating a, a, uh, one. These will be bilingual masses. Uh, the, the liturgy will have elements of both English and Spanish. And, and again, it's, um, it's one of the things that it is important that we, we do these things, not only to celebrate the lady, but also because many of our, uh, our brothers and sisters around the world uh, do, do, uh, do, do pray that she prays for us. And it's also remember, for, especially for you Roman Catholics, to, to remember that it's not that we are worshiping her. There's something called veneration. We venerate her. We ask her to pray for us. Again, things that we need to say, the Congress, you agree with me, information, because again, it goes into why we do these things. Why do we have the statue of the, of the lady with the child? Right? We are not worshiping that statue. No, 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 no. What we venerate, we do it in honor. And in fact, that's how I am announcing this. I'm doing this Mass in honor. Because only Christ, only God, is to be worshipped. Right? So, I want to, I want to, before I give my final blessing, I would like you to uh, turn it back, turn it back, if you have it. And let's just say it together. And again, keep it in mind what I just said. Even us Episcopalians should really not have a problem with this, okay? Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all our families and loved ones the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. He was actually in the, uh, speaking about COVID, right? So this is why he's doing that. But I would say any illness, really, or, or any, any pain. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach us all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, held to the sick and cause of joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your son, Jesus. Amen. Please rise. La paz de Dios, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesucristo, Jesus Christ our Lord. La bendición del Padre Todopoderoso, Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh.